I know you're here. Good morning. Today, as Marvis always says, we have another great lesson coming from the book of Daniel. The title, A Sincere Faith. The focal verses are Daniel 1, 8 through 21. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us another day. We thank you for health and strength and life and things being as well as they are. Heavenly Father, we ask that you open our eyes in this lesson. Heavenly Father, let us learn what is in this lesson about obedience, trust, and faithfulness, and how we not only should hear the word, but apply it to our everyday lives. It is in your son Christ Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen. By the end of the lesson, we will analyze the choice that Daniel and his friends faced and the choice's outcome. We shall aspire to have the faith of Daniel when confronted with contradictory directives from authorities and identify similar situations that call for the exercise of faith. Our in focus, Michelle had been working at her new company for a little over a month and she had just been invited by her coworkers out to lunch. While at lunch, her coworker Tamika asked if she was doing anything for the weekend. She had not been out in a while and replied that she did not have plans yet. Tamika asked if she would like to go to a party in what Michelle knew was a neighborhood known for drug dealing. Tamika said most of us who work here hang out around there together and it would be cool to have you join us. Two of the other co-workers at the table nodded in agreement. Michelle thought about it for a second. She remembered her cousin almost overdosing at a party in that same neighborhood. She knew that God had not called her to be involved in that kind of environment. No, I think I'll pass. I'm not really into the party scene like that. But let me pay for the lunch today. I appreciate all of all inviting me. Sometimes God places us in situations where our faith will be tested. Have you ever been tempted to compromise the standards of your faith to be accepted by others? You know, uh, when you learn better, you do better. And I'm sure all of us in our foolish states, not knowing that when we accepted Christ, there were conditions that came with it. And in our foolish state and before we came into the full knowledge of what being a Christian was all about. Many of us have compromised and made those poor choices, go along with the gang to get along with the gang. But now that we know better, we can do better. And this is all, this is what Tamika's choice was, to stand on what she knew was the wrong thing to do, so she chose to do the right thing. And sometimes that little voice can be speaking to you, telling you, no, don't go there. It can even tell you while you're driving your car, go this way instead of your normal route. But he's, he talks to us if we just take time to listen. I keep in mind, but Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Right, that's from Daniel 1 through 8. Our at a glance today is purpose over pressure. Daniel 1, 8 through 14. Faith over fear, verses 15 through 16. And testimony after the test, 17 through 21. Michelle. Focal verses of Daniel 1, 8 through 21. And Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king who have appointed your meat and your drink. 
For why should you lose your faces? For why should you should you see your faces worse liking than the children which are of, you, of your sort? Then shall you make me endanger my head to the king. Then Daniel said to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and I will let them give us posts to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenance be looked upon before thee and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. And he consented to them in this matter and proved them ten days. And at the end of ten days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Melzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulps. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then, he, then the prince of the eunuch brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them, and among them all was, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Y'all, that was a Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego before their names were changed. Mm -hmm. Therefore stood the king, there, therefore stood they before the king, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in the, his realm. And Daniel continued even unto the to the first year of King Cyrus. Thank you. People, places, and time. Pulse, in the Hebrew language, this includes everything that is grown from sown seed, not only vegetables, but also fruit, legumes, grains, and bread. It was very similar to a healthy vegetarian diet. This type of food was eaten in a partial fast, excluding meat, dairy, and other delicacies. Eating pulse was not a condemnation of meat eating in general, but regarded by the participant as a way to humble themselves before God. A eunuch. A eunuch was usually a man who was castrated. These men were guardians of the women of the court, chosen because they could not harm them sexually. Eunuchs were p also placed in charge of other court officers because they were single-minded. They were not distracted by sexual desires or family responsibilities. In the ancient world, eunuchs were considered remarkable for their faithfulness to their masters. Eunuchs were common in the royal courts of the Jews, Persians, Babylonians, Romans, and Greeks. In the law, it was forbidden for eunuchs to be a part of public worship. Elsewhere in the New Testament, Jesus commends those who have figuratively made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of God. Why is obedience to God's word important in developing and strengthening our faith? Anybody want to try that question? Take on that question? Look at you looking like really tired. <laughs> that first question, why is obedience to God's word important in developing and strengthening our faith? First of all, obedience shows God that we love him and we trust him, which in turn activates his power in our lives. Yes, sir. Heed my commandments. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. A commitment. A j just um, coming down front and joining church, which a lot of people do, just join church. But a sincere, sincere, there should be a commitment, that heart, 
condition. It's the driving force. There has to be a heart change to, to do anything. Okay? The background. The book of Daniel opens with the statement that God delivered his people into captivity. Other prophets issued warnings of this captivity. And Daniel experiences and keeps a journal of the exile firsthand. While captivity is never ideal, God's promise not to leave or forsake his people is evident in these writings. Although Daniel's companions would be memorialized by their Babylonian names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel retained his identity and reputation throughout history for the courageous stand he took for God. Mishael, Azariah, and Hananiah were also faithful. They chose to be thrown into a fiery furnace rather than bow down to the king's golden idol. What does it mean to be faithful? What does it mean to be faithful? There you go. That's simple. You trust in God and loving in all circumstances, no matter what. Your faith and trust and your love for God is still there. Faithfulness requires submitting our ways to God. It was from a place, and it's from a place of realizing that we are in need of a Savior and that he is in control of our lives. All right. In depth, purpose over pressure. Daniel maintained an important element of identity. His purpose in refusing to eat the particular food that the king had provided was much less about ingesting food and more about maintaining faithfulness to God's law. While Daniel was in the king's control, he had to obey certain rules, but he still maintained control over his own body. That is significant right there. You know, um, some jobs that people work, unfortunately, think that they own you. They don't know how to talk to people. You're in fear all the time. They're always screaming and yelling. Some people work under those type of pressure. But one thing Daniel maintained, you might control what I do, but my body, don't belong to me. They, they, they realize that the creator himself, that's who, they body, who their body belongs to. And, and uh, often our purpose can be thwarted by pressure from our peers and the powers to be. Devising a plan of action might be the best tool to employ considering the temptations and threats will indeed come. Daniel's purpose to obey God was exemplified by his statement of refusal and his willingness to operate under certain conditions that would satisfy both sides. Okay, here's a question. When we face temptations to compromise or disobey God, what should we do to resist? How do you resist when you come up against one? You got to, you, you've got to be consistent in it too. You pray to God, you're consistent in obedience to God, no matter what. What is it, just say no? Just say no means no. Ask for strength, yes. Because if you give in to one thing, you'll start giving in to anything. <coughs> You've got to be consistent and stand on it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. 
and you can't quote what you don't know. So that means you got to stay in the word. You got to stay in the word. It's important. That's right. You got to read, pray, and study daily and ask the Lord for strength to overcome whatever comes your way. You got to pray for this. And as you do your best to learn the Savior's teachings and follow, follow them, the Lord strengthens you to withstand temptation. <clears throat> this is where the scripture teaches us to pray always that you may come up off a conqueror, that you may conquer Satan. Pray always. It ain't got to be nothing long and drawn now. You can, you can know you're going into a situation. Lord, help me. I'm headed in here. Lord, have mercy. But pray consistently. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. That's James 4, 7, and 8. These are, these are, these are things that will help you when you're, when you're faced with temptation and you're, you're put in a situation where you, the, the Satan is tempting you to compromise. And listen, Satan isn't somebody in a, in a red suit with horns. It can be the person sitting on the bench with you. It can be people in your household, on your job, in business matters. So don't be deceived about how you think Satan looks. The spirit will let you know. Discernment. Prime example. Prime example. Now we're put in a position where we're supposed to compromise our integrity and compromise our morals to make America great again. But what really is making America great again? What really is making America great again? Think about it. That means you want to put me back in, in slavery. Make sure I have no economic sustainability. Uh, make sure I can hardly feed my family. Make sure that you come in our neighborhood buying up property and then buy up the property, renovate the house, and sell them for far more than the people who originally lived there could even afford if they wanted to move back there. You, it is getting so pretty on how Satan tries to deceive you. It's what you call, it's not pretty, it's what you call nice nasty. But he's, he's very busy in today's time, so open your eyes and be aware. Faith over fear. Daniel asked to be fed a vegetarian diet in order to avoid eating meat sacrificed to idols and to avoid other trappings of Gentile royalty that might have compromised his dietary restrictions. We may at times be questioned as to why we refrain from certain activities, even though they can seem harmless and pose no visible threat. As Daniel and his companions ate a diet of pulp or vegetables, rather than consume the king's meat and drink, others expected them to wither away. However, as they feasted on vegetables and stood on their faith in God, they were blessed with even healthier appearance than all those in the royal household. Likewise, our faith should literally show in our lives. Because God's pres presence is impossible to ignore, 
their patience and calmness in this high pressure situation help them operate less out of fear and more through faith in God. They were confident that they would not only survive, but thrive in God's care. They didn't know how God was going to do it. They didn't know when he was going to do it, but they did know he was going to do it. And, and, and on top of all of this, the unit thought that uh, if he, he couldn't give them permission because he was in fear of being harshly punished. So he goes to, yes, so he goes to Mel, is it Mel's car? Mel's car? And ask, ask for these, this permission. And they still brought them food every day with meat. However, they took the meat from them instead of going through the king. But they still took it to them. They just didn't eat it. They held to their faith, their teaching, their, their belief. They stood on what they were taught. They didn't compromise. They did not give in an inch. And uh, you know when they say, go along for the sake of peace, if it's wrong, do you have peace? You don't have peace because you still have to give an account of how, of what you did in this situation. You got to answer for it. So I, I, that is one term that is a pet peeve with me. Go along for the sake of peace. I like to ruffle the feathers. <laughs> if it's wrong, it's wrong. And we have to learn to be willing to stand on what we know is right. We're at, a, we're at an age and time when time is crucial. And you can't play a pity pat with man. You can't. They've got to know who you are. And I'm not talking about your name, but who you are in Christ. It's got to show. You've got to, it's got to show, and you've got to stand on it. If, if somebody came in a mall with a gun and asked, are you a Christian? What you going to say? So, sometimes they say, well, no, no, stand on it. Stand on it. Sometimes we have to pray for strength to withstand temptation. But you got to have the will and the sincere desire to choose to do the right thing. If we will pray for strength, seek out spiritual nourishment, and choose carefully where we hang out. That's, that's another thing. You have to choose where you hang out. Like in the, in the uh, what you call this, Margaret? The in focus. Tamika couldn't go where they were going to hang out because she knew that was a troubled part of town. You got to choose where you hang out. You got to choose who's table you put your feet under. You got to choose whose house you visit. You even have to be careful on spiritual teaching. Because somebody, don't come to me saying, God told me to tell you. And I haven't even had an inkling stir up in me. to know, okay, that confirms that you came to teach me or tell me. I, you know, 
seemed like God would have spoke to me too. Now that's just me. That's just me. I don't know how anybody else viewed it. But here, Daniel, Mich Michelle, Hananiah, and Azariah, or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they stood on eating only the, the vegetables, or what we call root vegetables. I think that's what we call them, Brother Carter. Potatoes and the carrots and the onions and the things like that of the, of the ground. And uh, they came out after eating this food for 10 days. They were tested. After this test, they showed up looking fairer and much stronger than the other subjects who were in training. That tells you something right there. My mama used to tell me uh, she cooked just vegetables. She said, hey, you don't need it. You don't need meat every day. I thought I did. <laughs> I thought I did. You don't need meat every day. But I sure was hungry for a pork chop or a chicken leg. <laughs> uh, <but laughs> a meatloaf or something. As I've grown older, I've learned that's the best meal ever. The best meal ever. And sometimes just some beans and cornbread. And I thought that was, that was a no-no, but now the best meal ever. But they were, they were content with eating just this. Knowing, for one thing, they were trusting in God and they had the, had the faith to know that God would sustain them through this. Again, I say, I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know where, but I know he's going to do it, and he did. Brother Carter, you got something to say over there? You know, uh, we used to have buttermilk and cornbread. And cornbread. Yes. That was a meal, y'all. It was good. And we yes. had a... I, I, that's when I tell you, I get to think about how good God been. We had a big old, one of these big old cup like what you buy these beans and things and they you know, and cut mm -hmm. the top out of. And we used that for our, what we put our cornbread and buttermilk in, y'all. And sometimes we'd have a sweet potato with that. Mm -hmm. That's when I tell y'all, I get happy yeah. when I get to think yeah. about how good God is. And we would come in from school and get that buttermilk and that cornbread and crumble it up in that cup and that baked potato she had right there, and we would eat that, and y'all talking about it. it was good because that's what the Lord had for us. And I was just thinking, and at that time, the folks on the hill, they had whatever they want to mm -hmm. eat. Mm -hmm. And they was wondering, how in the world can them folks be looking like they looking and we know what they're eating. Mm -hmm. But when God is in the plan, y'all, yes. yes. it's there. Mm -hmm. And I think about it a lot of time. A lot of people don't realize how good God is. You know, and when I think about, didn't know where the next meal was coming from, mm -hmm. I don't know why my mama would fix it, y'all, or where it would come from. But we would have something but to eat. We have something to eat. And we would have something to eat. That's right. And, and I think a lot of time, not reading, a lot of this stuff is so high what we used to, what they used to throw away. Mm -hmm. And we used to eat it. But they didn't realize how good it was. Uh -huh. Yeah. They used to throw away them pig tails and them pig sheep, pig ears, and chitlins, all of that kind of stuff. <laughs> It's high now because they realize black people like it. Uh -huh. 
And it was doing, and it was good for us. Mm -hmm. And and the Lord brought us, through, and they were just wondering how in the world can them folks be living like mm -hmm. they living and looking like they looking. And we know what they eating, and we know what they live at. But God was just so good, just like He was with these boys. They was eating what they been used to eating. They hadn't been used to. I'm using my word now. They hadn't been used to eating hounds and hogs. Now, there has been a lot of people, when they said what the king wants you to eat, want you to eat what he eat. Lord have mercy. You'll be surprised that the people would have turned their nose up at what they've been living off of and eating what the king eat, but they were losing out. And when time come, they didn't do this for a test. Now, they just told him, just give us, I'm using my word, give us a few days and let us eat it and feed them what the king want them to have and see how they look and how we look and how we act. And when the time was up, they looked at them boys. Them boys were plump, mind sharp, and everything. But cause they were doing what they was trained to do, stay with the Lord. And and, and you know it's a funny thing about how people live when you're with the law. I don't know why it's like that, but do you know people will get against you when you're with the law? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They will. Mm -hmm. And they got so much against them till they know how Daniel and them been praying and going on. Had the king to make a decree. Mm -hmm. And at a certain time, Every he blow the horn and everybody would bow yeah. down mm -hmm. and pray. Lord have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. You've been good to me. And that's what we it, it scares you to think about how Trump, if he gets back in, and and I'm not talking politics, but I'm just talking about the things he said. Do you realize he's talking about? turning this country into a one-controlled nation by a dictatorship. You, you got to, you, and you, and you can't take it and, and say, uh, God's going to get him. You got to put some action behind it. God's going to get him. But you got to do something in the meantime. You got to pray. And I mean fervently. Fervently. And the sad part about when, when wrong gets control, naive people jump on the bandwagon. Because Satan has his legions. And they jump on the bandwagon. And the ball just starts rolling and it keeps rolling. And we as believers, what do we do? We sit back and let the ball roll right on past. God is taking care of all of us. God is taking care of us. We got to do some praying and we got to get some action. And sometimes we have to take a stand. And this is what Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, this is what they did. They took a stand. And Melchizedek, when they brought Daniel, when they brought them their food supply every day, he took the wine and the meat away from them. But let's look at this. Uh, I have a theory on why they looked healthy and fattier than the king's people did who ate the king's food. Okay. I think when they ate their, their pulse, they, um, Praying after God, it would strengthen and nourish their bodies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, 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 and the king, did. people just, just I, ate. I, don't, I think they just, just ate. I don't know, I think they just ate, but dang, I think they prayed and asked for it, be, for it to nourish and to strengthen nourish their, bodies, their bodies, and it did. That's why it's important for us to pray when we eat. No matter what you're eating, ask God blessings upon it that may, may it be and strengthened you know, and nourish your body. And, and sometimes you have to pray not to let it harm you, amen, not to let it harm you. You can also ask for it to be satisfied to your taste buds, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you should always but pray for it. Pray and give yeah. thanks for it. No matter, 
Every prayer is different. It's always crazy. And and another thing with this, in where um, the wine and the meat was taken away, God used the king, the eunuch, and Melchizedek. He had to touch touch Melchizedek's heart to even for Daniel them to even get to the point where their meat and wine was taken away. He had to do he had to touch their heart some kind of way. Or it could have just been a negative impact and they'd be forced to do it. But they were not. Obedience means hearing the word of God and acting on it. It implies aligning our lives, our will to God's will, doing what God has asked us to do. It is when we completely surrender to his authority and base our decisions and our actions on his word. Let's, let's look at... Um, Do you know they would bring that food in there? Mm -hmm. But the Bible don't say what they did with but I'm satisfied them gods and them other folk ate that food up, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. But they would bring it in there, and them boys kept on living like the Lord want them to live. You know they didn't throw it away. Yeah, no, they didn't <laughs> throw it away. And, you know, and then... When the Lord got ready for him, I wanted to bring him in here, let the king look at him, see how they look. Lord have mercy. And they were looking, I'm using my word, good, greasy. And then they could answer any kind of question that the king had, but better than all what he had in there. But when the Lord deal with you and give you something, I don't care what it is. It just, you just can't take it away. And it just do something. And my mind always goes back, y'all, to some of the stuff the Lord showed me. Because, see, I don't have the education like a lot of people have. Mm -hmm. But I was dealing with people that I was in class or in the business with working. Mm -hmm. And every one of them that I was over, y'all, had more education than I had. I was over them. Some of them was professional, but they had done got a job at Gilman working out there in the department where I was working there. Mm -hmm. And here I am. They didn't even get out of high school. As a matter of fact, I didn't get no higher in the sixth grade, y'all. But the Lord just did something for me. I don't know what it is. But I was over all of them people out there, and sometimes I would just look. I said, Lord, she sure was good to me. And I ain't telling y'all nothing wrong. Y'all might think I'm wrong, but some of them that was working under me, y'all was teachers. Mm -hmm. And but they had to work under me, and here I am, don't know nothing. But the but Lord God granted you wisdom. Yeah. But the Lord kept me there. Mm -hmm. And I think about that a lot. Of that mean I tell y'all, I just get so happy. Mm -hmm. How good the Lord been to me. You see. If I had, I had a chance to go to school like my children did, ain't no telling what I could have did. But Lord in heaven knows. I didn't get a chance to get out of the sixth grade. Mm -hmm. But the Lord took care of me, y'all. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I mean, he took care of me. Mm -hmm. And brought me all the way down to right now. That means I say a lot of times, a lot of people don't like to tell where they come from and how they had to live. But if the Lord been good you to you, to tell you ought to tell it. Everywhere you go, you ought to tell it. And sure enough, that's why I do like I do, y'all. Because I look back over my life and see how good the Lord been to me. I just can't help but to tell it. I just can't help. It just something get on the inside, man. I can't help it. 
look back and see how good God has been to me. Brought me all the way down to right now. Y'all might think I'm telling you something wrong, but when I was working, I was over a department at Gilman where we made paint there, and I was the top man in there. Mm -hmm. People had to come under me mm -hmm. to get what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I would be at work, and I'd see some of them white guys would come in there, truck drivers and salesmen, and I had a little old place up there where I stood at, and he'd walk by me. I know they were looking for some, and I know they're going to have to come through me. And they would go down through there and see some of them white guys and tell them about what they want, and I would see them point, you got to go back up there and see him. And some of them would come back up there and see me, you know, and I'd let them have what they want. But the, when, when, when the Lord give you something, don't abuse what the Lord give you. And sometimes they would come in there and old Satan would get on me. And uh, they would want some and be done got it and going to leave us. No, you can't leave out here with that. You got to get a reposition before you get out here with that. And then he would call up to the office and tell them what I done said. They said, well, it, it Willie told you that's what you got to have. So that's what you got to have before you leave out <laughs> down there with it. I'm telling you, the law was good. Just, I just can't help it, y'all, mm -hmm. sometimes. I get to looking back over my life, how good God been. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I know when all of this wasn't into your lesson, because you done studied your lesson, how you wanted to explain it and everything. But when the Lord put something on my heart, I just can't help but to tell it. Mm -hmm. And I was working in the department for them put me over lack of building. And I used to tell them about how that stuff would make me sick. And so it was a guy that was over the department didn't like me. So he knew I didn't like that stuff. So he had them to fix it up where I would come down there and work under him. Mm -hmm. Y'all might think I'm saying something wrong, but when I went down there, that stuff would, when you walk in there, it would make you high. That's the honest truth. You would be just the high you sit in there a few minutes. And so that first day, I told him, I said, I can't take this down here. He said, well, sir, if you can't take it down here, we'll have to find you something else to do. I said, okay. So I went on home that day. And the next day, they sent me back down there. So the plant manager come to him, wanted to know how was I doing. I told him. How I was feeling about it. He said, okay, so go home then and come back tomorrow, so we'll take care of that. And so I went home that day, y'all. Might think I'm telling you something wrong. I was that stuff would make you just as high as you could be. And so the next day, when I went back to work, the plant manager come out there for over there. He said, Willie, how you doing today? I told him. He said, well, so we're going to see, can we do something about this? And I said, okay. I thought he was going to move me up and down there. Mm -hmm. But he told me, he said, we're going to put you over this down here. And the man that would had me working under him, y'all know they got rid of him <laughs> and put me in charge of that place. And when I left there, left when I retired from Jim, I was still in that same position. Mm -hmm. And I tell folks, that's me not. I like That's to say, I hate to get to start talking because I get to look at back mm -hmm. and see where the Lord brought me from. And I just can't help but to tell it, y'all. I just can't help. I don't be intending to do this when we start to talking, but I look back, I say, Lord, you sure been yes. good to me. Yes, did. Thank you. And then I look around and I see all of y'all young people in here with little children when I was. When y'all was coming up, all of y'all was little children. I remember all of you. And I look at you now, I said, Lord, you've been mighty good mm -hmm. to me. Yo, I, I, I know y'all want to go and get through with your lesson, but I just can't help it when I get to looking back how good God been. And you know, I just keep on thanking the Lord. When I wake up, I said, Lord, you have started me on another day, and I'm so glad to be mm -hmm. here. Lord. And when I walk in here and see y'all young people in here, I say, Lord, I'm just so glad to be here. 
Y'all just don't know how good God has been. I'm telling you, I know you want to go and get through with your lesson. Child, go ahead. Brother Carter, I enjoy listening to you. Mm -hmm. I love listening to you. Sister Morris, before you go on, Daddy, you said something about um, growing up, not knowing what you were going to have and all that stuff. You're the only person in this room who was born during the Great Depression. Y'all remember learning mm -hmm. that in school where there were no jobs, food was hard to get, mm -hmm. but here you are, all by the grace of God. He said, you ought to tell it, and you ought to tell it everywhere you go that the Lord been good. Yes. And, and, and it was this year, y'all, and I said, told y'all this in here. I was at home, and I know what kind of life I'd live. And I said, Lord, I ain't been good. I don't know why you're keeping me around you, because I ain't been that good. But do y'all know, it, it, the Lord spoke in my mind. He wasn't keeping me here because I've been good or bad. Mm -hmm. He was keeping me where I could tell somebody else, mm -hmm. Lord mm -hmm. Hambers, how good he is. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sometime I'd be aching with pain, but I said, Lord, I sure do thank you good that I'm able to feel yes. the pain. Sometimes people have pain and don't even know to have them. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. Lord, I thank you. Mm -hmm. And that's when I said, when I wake up and the Lord started me on another day, I said, Lord, I'm glad about it. Amen. Do you know there's somebody laid down last night the same time I did? And when they woke up this morning, they don't even know they're in the woods. But the Lord, I'm going to stop, y'all. I can tell you. Thank you, Brother Carter. Testimony after the test. Despite Daniel's youth and the fact that he was a captive, he honored God in all that he did. Moreover, he did not plot to escape his captivity or otherwise thwart Nebuchadnezzar's scheme. By staying where God had placed him, Daniel and his friends were able to be witnesses of God's power simply by being obedient. Their peaceful resistance to the meal requirement was balanced by their willingness to serve and answer the king, answer to the king. Their physical appearance astounded those around them, especially when accompanied by the God-given gift of discernment and prophecy. Daniel and his friend's testimony was not in their ability to pray for and receive an immediate release from captivity but rather a demonstration of how God kept them, elevated them, and ultimately made them victorious in a treacherous situation. In time, Daniel and his friends were, would be tested further by the pagan king, but they continued to be faithful to their God. Daniel, them, uh, what I read something where it says they were like being on a job interview. They were, they were questioned, they, their appearance was looked at, and looked at carefully. But God blessed them with, with wisdom, he blessed them with skills and understanding. He gave them what was needed, and the, and the, the outcome, their future, perhaps even their lives and the lives of men who cared for and trained Daniel and his friends were dependent on the outcome. So if, if they had come out looking puny, dragging, clothes hanging off of them, they'd lost so much weight, they stuck in the end. Somebody was going to the chopping block. Somebody was going to pay because the king had given orders. And if they were eating meat and drinking wine, they shouldn't be looking like this. But they stuck to their faith. The king 
likely interrogated the young men either individually or in groups to discern the depth of their understanding. Daniel, Hananiah, Michelle, Michelle and Azariah stood head and shoulders above the rest of the captives. They looked good, y'all. Oh, yes, they looked good, robust men. While these four young men distinguished themselves before Nebuchadnezzar, they also distinguished themselves before God through their courage and faithfulness to God's command. The phrase stood before the king is a literal rendering of the Hebrew. The words are the same, the same. The conversation with the king was a combination of a final exam and a job interview. I think I had read it somewhere. We see here a principle of privilege coupled with responsibility. That's, that's you know, privilege. Entitlement. Some don't realize there is a responsibility in having, having those, those top things. God entrusted Daniel and his friends with great gifts. But those gifts came with an obligation. God called them to stand with courage and conviction repeatedly throughout the time of their service. The king and the rest of the book shows was a demanding and unjust man at times. God gives good gifts, but not necessarily to make our lives easier or more comfortable. He frequently calls his most gifted servants to exercise great courage and count any present happiness as loss for the sake of advancing his eternal kingdom. Now, the question is, what are the benefits of choosing to obey God and remain faithful? What are some of the benefits? Anybody? us is some of the benefits if we obey it. And, 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 and I wasn't intending to say this, it just got in my mind when I said everything we do. This is some of the benefit is me being an old man here. Uh -huh. This is some of the benefit, but I didn't obey God all the way, y'all. Don't get me wrong and think I obeyed God all the way. If you'd have seen me when I was young, you'd have thought that I didn't even know the Lord. And I act like I didn't know him. And people know me, know that I act that way. But the Lord just kept on bringing me. And you know, whenever the Lord got something for you, I don't care how far you go or how long you stay, mm -hmm. you got to come back right around by what God wanted you to be. And, and, and when I get to talking, I get to thinking about when them old folks used to tell me, say, say, boy, you can run, but you can't hide. Say, you can go a long way, but you can't hide. Mm -hmm. And I often think about something my mama used to tell me, y'all. She said, I don't care how high you fly. Mm -hmm. Say, so when you get ready for something to eat, say, you got to come down. I said, Lord, hammer. I didn't understand none of that stuff, see, when they were telling me that. But it comes back to memory. But it come back now, what they were trying to tell me. You running away, but the Lord got it fixed. You got to come right back down here where the Lord wants you. And you got to say what he wants you to say. And when he wants you to say it, you got to say it. And I, like I tell you all in here a lot of times, Y'all might not believe it, but when I get started to talking, I don't be intend to do all this talking. And as a matter of fact, where I used to be, I had such a short talk to a Reverend Tia wife gave me the name. Show sure did. Show sure did. You tried to get me to say something, I wouldn't. I said, yeah. 
but that's what it was about. But now the Lord put to a moment, I just can't stop talking. Now you now. can't stop. I just can't. That's what I tell y'all. I just can't help it. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I just can't help it. I don't now, be intending to do it. Now let's talk about some more. Now let's I, talk I don't about be some intending to do it, but I just can't help it. Now there are uh, other benefits. I got to answer you. One of the benefits okay. is the one of the benefits of, for obeying God's word. He will never leave you or forsake you. There you go. There you go. And every command God asked of us isn't just for his sake, but for ours. The call to obedience is for our benefit. The reward, you will be blessed wherever you go. Your children will be blessed. God will protect, protect you. He will grant you abundant prosperity where it's needed. Everything you set your hand on will be successful. It's not saying money-wise. It's not saying you're going to get rich, but if you earnestly set out with a task with the Lord, doing it for the Lord in mind, it'll be successful. And the Lord will help you to stand out. Deuteron in Deuteronomy 28, it says, obedience means hearing the word of God and acting on it. Uh, it implies aligning our will to God's will, doing what God has asked us to do. It is when we completely surrender to his authority and base our decisions and our actions on his word that we are faithful, trusting, and obedient to God. And our, I turned the page before I got to it. Good way to tell you about it. If if you live a certain kind of way, which you get chance to see, mm -hmm. and he tell you about you know seeing your children, children, children. Yeah. And you know that's mean I tell y'all I get happy because the Lord bring this back to my mind. You know, now I done seen my children, children, and I done seen some of my grandchildren's children. Yeah. And I said, Lord, you it's sure best. been good. Yeah. And the Lord ain't no shorter than it would, y'all. He said, if you live, I, I don't know how I was living, but the Lord kept me here where I could tell somebody that what he said in the word is true. Mm -hmm. When he said that you'll be blessed if you have children. Mm -hmm. And you'll be blessed to see their children. And you're blessed to see their children, children. I said, Lord. Lord have mercy. You sure been good to me. Lord have mercy. I've seen my grandchildren and some great grandchildren. And I'm still right here able to move about. I know this ain't our lesson, y'all, but I just can't help it. I just can't help it. I'm going to let you go and close your lesson out, child, because I just can't help it. I get to looking back how good God is to me. I just, I just can't help it. Sometimes we just need a Sunday, yeah. Sunday school where we just witness, mm -hmm. testify. Yeah. Because if all of us look back over our lives, we can see how good God has been to us. And Brother Carter, I'm just happy that I never thought I would see three children, nine grandchildren, four great-grandchildren. It wasn't even in my mindset, but I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Yeah, I'm blessed. Yes, I'm blessed. Tell it. Tell it. Liberating lesson. Those whom society designates as role models are not guaranteed to be examples worth following. Our culture celebrates celebrities for the sake of fame and seems to worship money at any cost. 
regardless of the true price in terms of morals and decency? How then can we demonstrate principles and cherish faith in God when the very opposite is what, what receives all of the attention? Can't you see that today in society? That's all we hear. That's all we hear, and it's frightening. The church must be willing to speak the truth, identify both the good and the questionable, and try every spirit against the spirit of God. A simple act of discernment can prevent disaster and may well save a soul. If you evaluate your personal life, do you demonstrate the characteristics of a positive role model? Only you can answer that question. Are we living the way God would want us to live? Application for activation. Write out a list of positive Christian role models who exhibit a life of conviction and character. Choose to fast from specific foods this week, meat or sweet. Pray that God would give you convictions that come from him and not your other authority figures. And I've, uh, in closing, I have here, uh, you got something to say? Okay. Uh, Second Timothy uh, 1 and 7, when we overcome temptation, we will draw near to Jesus Christ and to our Heavenly Father. So draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Share your belief. Sharing our beliefs with others will lessen the temptation in our surroundings. By living the gospel, we can overcome temptation in our lives. This has been our Sunday school lesson for today. Mary Morris has been your teacher. Thank you. <laughs> what did you say, Sam?